Yes. All right, let's do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So we have no bodies for public input, so we're not going to read that. Right. We don't have public input, so we're skipping down to number three minutes. What did you find, Stephanie? I did not. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I actually had a question. Sure. Was Sucknell's a resignation or a retirement, or does it matter? It was a retirement. It's a retirement. Did I put resignation? I believe it says Okay, so we can address adjust that. Thank you. Yeah, it does say resignation. Okay. We'll fix that. Anybody say anything else? No. Okay, I'll take a motion for an amended minutes. I make a motion we accept the amended minutes. Second. Is it Alma? Yeah. She raised her hand. That was Alma. Quiet, <laughs> Yeah, you got to speak up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, all those in favor? Accepting the amended minutes. I vote. Okay, facilities and finance update. Sure. So this evening we just wanted to have part two of the discussion about the um, overcrowding or the space issues that we have in North Berwick. So tonight we wanted to talk a little bit more in depth about um, MHA, Mary Heard Academy, and some of the history that um, led us up to where we are now with MHA, and then we wanted to talk a little bit more about Milton School. Uh, currently, what, what we have for um, the makeup of the grade span there, the room space there, um, so we'll go through that. And um, we also, Sue, is that Travis? Yeah, I don't think it's. Yeah. Yep, so Sue also put something out um, about inviting um, board members to go visit Right. the two spaces right so uh, the hope would be that we, we do a little more um, discussion tonight and then next week would be the opportunity to visit if anybody has time in their schedule to do so and then we move um, into the final discussion or a final or more discussion <laughs> at the following meeting that so way, by the end of December yes I think so yeah. I think that would make a good timeline uh, just because it is a, a decision yeah. with many factors yeah so uh, just for reminders, last time when we talked, we talked about the three proposals. One was to put install modulars um, in North Berwick. The other was to move the fifth grade over to Milton School. The other option was to look at uh, Mary Heard Academy. Uh, because of the price of the modulars and to sprinkle them and to get them all up to code, um, that was cost prohibitive for us at that time, so we took that one off the table. So we are looking at two um, situations, right, two options right now, which is MHA and Milton. So Sue, do you wanna start talking just about MHA a little bit? Sure. Um, so I shared a document with you folks about sort of the historical piece about Mary Heard Academy. Um, some of you were not on the board when they started this program. Um, some of you are. So I just want to kind of go over it quickly. I'm not going to read it to you, because that's why I sent it to you, so you can read it later. But basically, Mary Heard was started in uh, September of 2013, based mostly on the fact, hello, Rebecca, mostly on the fact that we had hit that $1 million marker of students going out of district. And we really determined that we could probably um, create our own pro industry program and uh, if not provide the same um, for less money at least it would be in district and, and kids would be in their own community so we broke it down as you see as, as you'll see I just kind of talked about um, what the development phase looked like we did a lot of research actually around the district looking for and outside of the district looking for physical spaces that would benefit a program like this and ultimately, um, 
we actually came back to the Mary Bird, Bird to the Herd School at that point and talked about build, uh, creating two cottages for North Park Elementary School that would be more modern and up-to-date for students um, because um, the Herd School in general was it's like our second oldest building underneath um, Lebanon Elementary School. It might even be a little older actually than Lebanon Elementary. And it needed quite a bit of sort of just support and work for, for 100 students to be there, which is what the Northburg fourth and fifth grade was looking like. For the, um, but this particular program was about, we, we figured we would start with about 20 students. There was a lot more flexibility in that building. Um, and so that's really what, what the focus became. And the other thing, just, just to, aside from the financial savings in terms of um, having our students in district, and with our own programming, we really talked about like the fact of um, these kiddos are some of the most challenging in the district, behaviorally or emotionally needy. Um, and we really felt like we could do a better job serving them in our community. These are, these are typically um, young folks who do not leave the area, they stay in our community. So developing those relationships in terms of within the North Burke, Burke and Lebanon system just made a lot more sense. So we really focused on community building. We talked about like social emotional um, academics, obviously. And then the fact, the good part about the academic piece is that we could tie right into the high school and meet the standards, maybe in a different way, but meet the same standards as, the, as, the, as our normal high school students. When we were sending our students out of district, it was a much harder sort of match to help those students get noble diplomas when they were out at um, day treatment programs like Sweets or Sperling or even Maplestone, those kind of things. And um, the other part was that reintegration of students from um, out of district placements into the into noble was really difficult. Um, it, on base, just like some of it's just logistically having students be able to come back in for a class or two and work their way back in can't really do that if you're busing students to um, like Saco or Portland or wherever it is that the programming was. It just wasn't, it didn't make for a good, easy integration. So that was another sort of thought process for us. Um, and so we decided that this was something we we're gonna go forward with. Um, and economically, it was obviously better for us in the long run. Um, and we also were able to ultimately develop a program that we are now able to tuition other students from other districts in on a regular basis to help offset the cost. So at the bottom of that um, document, and I hope you read the whole thing because I did do a kind of an overview of everything that we're doing there regarding like um, the external learning opportunities and the programming that we do provide on a daily basis. But if you look to the bottom of that, it really does come down to the brass tacks of the finances, which is um, MHA currently has an enrollment of 27 students. Um, we'll be at 29 or 30 at the end of December because we have two students from the district coming, you know, that are touring right now, and an out-of-district student on the, on the docket. Um, so total cost for running the program, all, all staff, which includes salaries and benefits, purchase services, which is not much, but it's just a little extra things that we work on with the students, and supplies is $726,641. So, and we currently have five students tuitioned in, and, it, and those are per student is $29,950. So with a total cost for those five students, or revenue to the district, of $149,750. So that brings the total cost of the program itself for those students um, to $576,891. If, if we were to have placed those 22 noble students out in the, in the sort of comparable um, out-of-district placements, we kind of just divvied them up between two programs, Maplestone, which is um, kind of an experiential learning program in um, Acton, and Sweetser, which is a typical programming thing. There, it would, it would have, with, with tuition, extra services, because most of, Sweetser in particular charges a baseline and then services on top of that. 
and transportation for us to get our kids to and from, um, we worked it out to be like $1.2 million, so a million two eighty nine four twenty, dollars um, And then I broke it down for you so you can see that. But So the savings, if you think about that, the savings to the district is about $712,000. So it's pretty significant. Um, now, having said that, we are certainly open to whatever the board, you know, wants to do. And I think that we'd like to um, definitely give whoever is interested a tour, um, sort of that back-to-back -back between what Milton looks like, what Mary Curd looks like, and then any of the other buildings, maybe Hussey, whatever, whatever folks are interested in looking at. Um, so I've set, I know that three, you three, have responded, and I'm happy to, to I'll fit it in based on, um, I'm gonna just look at the information, but I'll get back to you about the date. And I can do more than one, so it's not, it's not a problem that way. And I have no problem giving individual tours. <laughs> it's not a problem. Um, so I, just so that you have good, sort of full visual, when, you, when we have that conversation next week. To Can you um, do break it down as to how many rooms there you're seeing in the building? Yep, for sure. Yep. 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 That's yeah, yeah. Yep. Oh, I've got some of that. Yep. Okay. Yep. Well, and I can tell you right now, so the building itself has, um, what did we say, nine usable rooms, right? Because that's what we're thinking in about. In total? In total. Okay. Upstairs. Upstairs. And that, upstairs. And that includes that's just taking, upstairs. yeah, no, that's up and down. Okay. So there's. Um, so I'm gonna. I'll pass this on. Yeah. Right. Sure. Yes. I'm sorry. I didn't mean no, to. No. Thank you. Too. Yep. Nope. So based on that's <laughs> fine. Question for you, really quick though. Mm -hmm. This is actually the backpack corner, right downstairs. Okay. Yeah. Because this thing basically can't really take me here. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. okay. So there are nine classrooms available at Mary Hurt Academy. Okay. If we take everything out, like we remove. The food pantry folks, and basically, so it leaves um, three possible rooms if we keep Mary Hurd in the building. Like if we keep the, the Mary Hurd students in the building, and then just there are three rooms that are available. Does um, that include the food pantry in the included in those nine? So this is actually the backpack program that says food pantry here. It's um, really the backpack program and the second chance closet, which are downstairs, like in the cellar. Oh, okay. So those are they could remain. No they could what was done. They could what? They could remain there. They could remain. Yep. Okay. Yep. If we decide to do that. Yep. Um, so there's three. With some work, there are three rooms that we could we could sort of take take on for elementary. Um, yeah, and that's 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 pretty much that. But I think it'll be helpful for y'all to see it in person and see the see what's happening there. And Spencer's on. Hi, Spencer. In case you have any initial questions for Spencer. Spencer's um, our principal, principal at, at oh. MHA. Yeah. <laughs> there probably will be questions after the visit. Yeah. So, exactly. um, so I have a question. Um, yeah. I thought when we were considering um, like using some of the space there, we were not considering moving the current programs out, right? Not necessarily, no. Okay. I think I just, we just wanted to be clear about what was available. Okay. Okay. Um, I just didn't. Across the board. Okay. I didn't think, I, I just was confused a little bit by the description of whether. Oh, awesome. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, we're turning you up. <laughs> there you go. No, Yo, you're, you're actually, you're correct. Um, this would, if there are three rooms that are available, if we coexisted. Okay. If MHA stayed and then we added, we took um, this the lower wing, um, but it will be tight, so we'll just have to figure that out. And to your question, Denise, last meeting, not your question, but just kind of asking us to project out further than just the fifth grade for space issues. If we needed to move the fourth grade, there are three classes at MHA that we could use. Yeah. So that doesn't necessarily solve that the four or five the four problem. Or five problem. Um, we did speak with Mike um, from North Berwick and Sarah, who's the assistant in North Berwick, and they did talk about one of the things that they were thinking about uh, longer term for fourth grade and third and second is to look at class size and make them a little bigger so that the fourth grade could stay longer in the building with, with the cottages. Right. 
um, than having to go um, to move quickly. Right. So that's like the second year. <laughs> the second, second yeah. part of it. And then, and well, I, it's the kindergarten right now that's the bubble. Yeah. So it would be second grade by the time they get to second grade. Right. And so, Denise, you actually, your question last week or two weeks ago really sort of propelled us to be thinking beyond the year that's in front of us. And it did open up so, well, it opened up that whole box that we always love to open, right? The next, like, what, how is this all going to play out? Yeah. Great. So I also shared the, the document that I handed out. It starts with North Berwick Elementary School. So, um, Currently, there are 300 students, so we'll just review some of this. So I hope you have that, Denise. Currently, 300 students in North Berwick, and the layout is four sections of kindergarten. That's the largest um, grade level Don't currently. Don't their numbers though lower in kindergarten than the other Yes, grade. but still, this is still a pretty these high. Are yeah. There are, that's 64 students. Um, then three sections of sec first, second, third, fourth and then fifth has two sections. They will need three sections next year of fifth grade and that is um, so when we were looking at this this is why we had looked at three classrooms. So they have um, 20 rooms that you would consider one would consider available to be classroom size rooms classroom size rooms. <laughs> 18 of those rooms are currently being utilized for classroom spaces. One is a um, split room, full-size room split between special education resource and the behavioral interventionist. And then one room, which is a smaller space, um, houses Excel slash intervention. Uh, so that's, that's it. I mean, that's, there's no wiggle room there. Uh, one, of the, one of the current classrooms, I think it's Brigitte's room, um, is is yeah. almost half the size of a of like a, a traditional or typical classroom size. So her class, lit, you know, she doesn't have a full load of, of students in that classroom. It's not a full roster. It's so like your specials students. don't have any they do have space. Specials yes. do do okay. yes yeah. Uh, technology is on a cart, but art and music have a space, and the PE has the gym. Yeah. So then if you go down to Knowlton School, there's currently 201 students in the fourth and fifth grade. They have six sections of fourth, five sections of fifth, three special education programs, one of which is just straight resource. Uh, so they have 23 available classrooms. So similar, Nancy, they have an art room and a music room. And um, the library is the library slash technology. It's an integrated portion there. Um, so 11 of those 23 rooms are currently grade level classrooms. Four house the special ed programs. One is for Excel. One room is for just, it's a science lab. So it's, it's a nice sized classroom. It houses some of the science materials that the grade levels use and they can go sign in and go into that classroom to teach science. One classroom size room is for occupational therapy, physical therapy. One room is for uh, speech therapy and the math coach when she's in the building is there. That math coach is not fully there. It's one position throughout all kindergarten through fifth grade um, rooms and all those buildings. So it's, it's not a daily uh, person in that space. One room is the behavioral interventionist and then Two rooms house Title I educational technicians, the interventionist, and the literacy coach. And one room is a meeting space. In addition to the conference room in the office, across the hall is a classroom that's being used for meetings. So with careful reassignment, you could get an additional three to seven classrooms in that building. The work that would need to be done to one of those rooms is the science room. And they have the tables, like the more traditional tables that are already in the, you know, attached to the ground. So we need to pull those up and retile. Um, uh, sorry, I know this is in here, um, yep. but so it's, so five to seven classrooms. Um, mm -hmm. what, what was the number that we needed? 
We need three okay. for this year. For, I mean, for next year. Right, for yeah. next year. And then and, what, for the year then, after? Sure, so the, Mike's feeling is that he would like to increase class sizes, third, fourth, second, third, fourth, so that keeps the other, the K-4 students in North Berwick as long as they can go, which is longer than two years. You know, it's like three, four, five years out. Yeah. However, we have space at Knowlton to bring the fourth grade over because we have up to seven classrooms. So what I want to talk about is Huzzy. I didn't put Huzzy on here. The Huzzy space um, is right now, um, okay, they're doing, they're doing well. They're utilizing spaces, but they can consolidate how Knowlton would consolidate. So they are not in the, North Berwick is the need. Huzzy and, and Huzzy, um, Denise, you may remember this, but Huzzy had two modulars there at one point. So it's all set for modulars. If we needed to have more space and if North Berwick was at Knowlton and Huzzy needed more space, we could add another modular at Huzzy for a fraction of the cost yep. as North Berwick because things are already hooked up at Huzzy. So <clears throat> at Knowlton right now, they have fourth and fifth grade. Right. Okay. Yes. For Berwick. Yeah. The Berwick. Yes. Right. Yeah. So the school is set up for fourth and fifth grade. Right. Right. Whereas MHA, the, it's primarily high school students yes. that are there. So Mike would rather have larger classes to keep the fourth grade there? That's, what he's, that's his thought process right this minute. Yep. Okay. For second, third, and fourth. Yeah. His, because I mean, being yeah. fourth grade at, at Knowlton already, I think that, you know what I mean? They would be with other yes. fourth graders. Right. And that's also, that's right. that, is a, uh, that is also a consideration. So, and I think that Michelle, when we talked with Michelle, um, she actually was like, if we're going to go in that direction at some point, she felt like it would be best to do it at once rather than not. Like, let's just do it. Um, and then we would also, you would have to seriously look at the combination. So it would be a, a mix of Berg and North Berg kids. It wouldn't be like only North Berg kids here. Oh, and like true. For classes. Yeah. So well, just, what, when you put, if you put the fifth grade over there, is that what you're going to do too? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So last year when we had the mix, it was one floor, you know, one section was Lebanon at, at the middle school. One section was Lebanon section, fifth grade. One was North Berwick and one was right. Berwick. They would integrate. They would fully integrate. Because, oh, that's, yeah, that's a good yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah. What's the um, what's the increase for the class size? I mean, bigger classes. Like, do we have an example of, of what that looks like? Um, I think he was really looking in the twenties. In the yeah, in the early twenties. Yeah, low twenties. Okay, the early twenties. <laughs> Those earlies. Um, yes. But you're still going to have that bubble coming through. So when that that well, bubble gets there. there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And if and that's the other thing. If the kindergarten continues. Kindergarten's always like a roll of the dice a little bit because you get yeah. projections, but then when they actually show up, that's when you know. Yeah. And um, so if he gets a 64 or 70 the ne next year and then again, um, just I'll, I'll just give you a five-year statistic just so you have that. I did not print it all out, but find it. So this is just a total enrollment mm -hmm. for each building. So for Huzzy School, from 2016 to now, they've gone down 30 students. Mm -hmm. Knowlton School, between the same time frame, 2016 to now, they've gone down 32 students. Hanson School has gone down 38 students. Lebanon Elementary has gone down 22 students. And North Berwick has gone up 12. And you know, years dip and yeah, everything, yeah. but that's the overall change. Okay. Well, this is good information. Okay, okay. good. Yeah. I like this. All right. 
So we'll be able to go through it a little more yeah. um, the next the next so, meeting. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So just quickly, sure. do we want to schedule a time when you can take us on a tour tonight? Or uh, yeah. So I think what I have when I sent the email out to folks, um, Lynn and Stephanie responded. Let me find it. I didn't respond because I figured I. No, it's fine. And that's the <laughs> I, I figured I would see you here, so um, I figured I'd harass y'all. So, um, so Lynn had said Wednesday would be best, and you were Thursday, right? Thursday was best, but I can make Wednesday. Well, Thursday. I can. It's serious. I hope to that like those plots are in my world, and so I have no problem giving you a tour on Thursday. And what works for you? Um, Thursday would be better. Okay. Thank you. So all right, we're talking then, next week, right? Yes. And Alba, what time did you? Did you I think I had said Wednesday. I'm just checking. Okay. So I'll, I can do. We can do Lynn and Alba on Wednesday. So what that would mean is, is I would meet you guys, probably here at um, Wednesday was ten o'clock and Thursday both. So ten o'clock, if that works in your world. So here, the, does that work for you, Steph? Yes. Would you work schedule? Okay. So Thank the you. ninth, right? Yes. Yes. For, 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 yeah. So can you guys just sort of, if you send out an email or something like that, just keep me on it. I don't think I can make it, but um, I would love to. I just don't. Yeah, that's okay. The timing is not great, but I can do something differently, Denise, if you wanted to do something around your schedule that worked better. And Rebecca, the same for you. I know you guys have less flexible schedules. Um, so I can do after work hours. It's just what I was hoping was that you could see kids in action. I'm um, just because. What time do they start? What time? I'm sorry. What time do they start in the morning there? 7:30. Well, um, MHA is 7:30, and the element uh, Milton is 8:30, uh, basically. So I am pretty familiar with Milton, so I don't. I'm, I would be more interested in the Mary Hurd Academy, and I could okay. maybe maybe we could find a time to go. You know, just at eight in the morning or sure. Like yeah, that. we can definitely do that. Let me look at my schedule and I'll shoot a note out to you, okay? Okay. And uh that's that's good. Um I know that Kate was interested, but I think she is gonna be limping for a while, so I'll leave her <laughs> yeah. And um Travis has pretty has been very like he's been in all the buildings for right. a while. Right. So I think that's less of a concern. And Rebecca, I don't know if you're interested. Or able, less less interest, mostly able. Um, but I can do something special for you if you'd like. Oops, you're, you're talking and I'm not hearing um, you. Yeah, uh, I was on mute. Um, yeah, I'm not sure about next week. I'm kind of doing some stuff at work that's kind of. That's okay. And, and the other thing, we are not, uh, like, it'll be two weeks from tonight that we actually make the final conversation happen. So if something looks better the following week, Rebecca, I can do that. But again, no big pressure. We can also do, um, as we're touring, ladies, we can take a little video and send it out to Rebecca. <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> As long as I'm not in it, I'm okay. With it. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll play that one. Back. Yeah, so we can we'll take some video and, you know. Yeah, we can take a video and send it out. That's fine. Yeah. Um, my skills at that are not great, but I, I, I'm sure it will at least be entertaining. Probably the kids could do it. But yeah, probably. <laughs> totally. yeah. All right, so I'll, I'll try to figure, we'll try to do that next week, Rebecca, and then if it's a total fail, I'll reach out to you. But if it's not and it gets you what you need for information, then that will work. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Okay. Any other questions about this portion? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Spencer. <laughs> Go take care of those babies. You're welcome, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so is that all we have for finance facilities? For that, yes. yes. Um, we do have public input that just arrived. Do you want to fit it in? Do you want to fit it in? Or do you want to wait until the afternoon? Sir, did you have public input tonight? Oh, okay. Thank you. We want to give you a chance. <laughs>
So people we'll don't just usually come to hang out with us. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for that. Okay. So we're going to five. Yes. Okay. So for educational programming, we often just start talking about attendance. So student attendance has ranged, these are the past two weeks. So 66 was our low, and 100% was our high. And for staff attendance, 90, uh, 88 was our low, and 97 was our high. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you're going to speak to this later sure. or not, but the, the outbreak in Lebanon, I'm yeah. going to go over that. Sure. Okay. Okay. That would be part of that 66% yes. attendance. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so right prior to vacation, we had over 100 students out in Lebanon um, due to either being close contacts, testing positive, and then, you know, we usually have higher numbers at that time, right, leading into a, a longer weekend or something as well. But that was a significant... Uh, impact that we yeah. noticed in, in Lebanon. Um, so what we can say is that last week we had a total in the district of 30 cases. We currently have a total of 20 cases right now. The difference right now is that because we um, have more remote Monday and Tuesday, uh, close contacts aren't impacted at this point for, yeah. for those cases. Um, and are those just student? Cases though, those so staff. student and staff. And staff. We okay. do have some staff. Yes. Um, so seven. So this is this is the number that is really striking. I think that we want to just make you all aware of. So seventy-two percent of the last thirty-six cases have been residents of Lebanon. Say it again. Seventy-two percent of, of the last thirty-six positive cases have been residents of Lebanon. And that was um, one piece of the information that we were using those high numbers when we talked with the principal, the assistant principal, and Amy Crichton to see if we could kind of kick it out, you know, kind of, we, so many children were impacted being close contacts that we were hoping that this time for remote would really help us get to the next break. Um, so, and as I said, we, um, we have not had a lot of close contacts at this point because they've been out now since last Did you have a lot of new reported cases right after Thanksgiving? We, they're starting to trickle in, but the problem is, um, one of the issues we're seeing is that parents are take, doing the home test mm -hmm. and counting and calling us with the home test, but we have to take a test from the doctors, you know, like a, oh, got so a, home, got a home test. test positive. So we have all these pending cases that we are awaiting a different test result for. Um, we are a little, um, you know, we're going to look at our numbers next week. You know, it can go either way. We're not quite sure what that's going to look like. Um, but that's, you know, like one more thing, you know, everybody's kind of up right now. Uh, different districts are doing different things because they're seeing a spike in their numbers as well. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, but just Lebanon was just you know you had the bus, you know some close contacts from the bus, yeah. from the cafeteria, from playdates, from all of that, and it was just kind of a, a cycle that we weren't able to. <coughs> break. So that made did that make Monday and Tuesday easier though, as far as because. You, Everybody was remote, right. and that yes. the tracing of everything yes. was easier. Yes, and it was yes, and we were able to get parents, um, you know, on the phone. Yes, so we were able to do that, that piece. Yeah, yeah. So part of it. Oh, just bring it out now. I'll take care of it. Thank you. You're gonna get to be on TV. Leave the camera. Thank you. Thanks. See you later. <laughs> we did get um, feedback from uh, Patty Gilly and had all friends got feedback from women in, um, from like a, a good healthy handful of parents who were just very um, supportive of the fact that the the efforts to, to move this through the school so that we don't have to keep identifying a wide of those contacts and uh, 
and, and so the hope is Monday we're good to go. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. yes. Yep. So those were our big pieces for um, educational programming. Okay. Those conversations. Uh, ready to go on that? Why? Yes. Yeah. Going to employment. <clears throat> we have one resignation. Tyler Anderson. He's at Noble High School for math, and he is resigning. Um, effective, I think it's January 21st, to pursue a different career path. So we do need a motion for that. I'll make a motion we accept Tyler's resignation. I'll second that. Yeah. Second that. Okay. All those in favor? Thank you. Looks like everybody. Okay. Six now, right? <laughs> right. Okay. And we have two retirements. We have Nancy Day, who has been in Lebanon for 12 years um, as a literacy. She Right now she's doing some literacy coaching, but also working as a literacy interventionist. She was teaching reading recovery when she first began with us. And then another Lebanon teacher, Nancy Nason, who has yeah. uh, been the art teacher in Lebanon yes, for 34 yes. years. Uh -huh. years. Both of those retirements are effective at the end of the school year, so they're not now. Right. Uh, but they did submit their letters. So, and we do need a motion to um, accept those, and we can accept them both together. Okay. Make a motion to accept the two resignations. Is that all of them? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Did somebody to second it? I'll second it. All those in favor of the accepting the retirement? Okay. Good for those. Yeah. And we thank them for their yes. dedication yes. to Lebanon and their service. Yes. Yeah. Very much so. We do have a, um, we want to bring in a new um, a new candidate for you. It's not on the agenda because we just interviewed, Michelle Keniston interviewed yesterday and I interviewed today for um, the Sue Pinnell retirement. So even though it's not on the agenda, we would like to yeah, do a new hire. Sue Pinnell did I? She was fifth graded. She's fifth grade at Knowlton. Oh, okay. And last meeting we approved her retirement effective December, right before break. Okay. So this position would fill that retirement. Okay. So the big win. We were really worried about being able to fill it with a good candidate. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. So are you okay if I present this? Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this candidate is Rebecca Alfredson, and she is coming to us um, from, let me get the name of the school, Salem Academy Charter School. She has taught fourth grade. She has done some coaching. She's working uh, more as some administrative pieces right now. Um, and she has her master's degree from Brown University and her undergraduate degree from Stonehill College. Uh, the team that interviewed her was very excited about um, her literacy knowledge, her depths and breadths of literacy knowledge and just the work that she's done with the fourth, fourth grade students around community, community building. Um, her degree from Brown was in urban educational policy. So she had a, a, great, a great kind of perspective on the community building and really working with students around um, those pieces of behavior and, and that. So it's, it's, they're very excited at Milton School. So that and is she's going to be, this is a fifth grade class. This is a fifth grade class. So she's we, okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> so we would like to be able to um, have her join us. We need your approval. So would you like to make a motion? Or? I make a motion that we uh, proceed with hiring Rebecca Albertson for yes. fifth grade at Milton School. Second? I'll second. Lynn? <laughs> All those in favor? Everybody, Excuse me. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> that all of the that employment. That's all of the employment. Moving to other. Okay. I feel like I'm doing talk in here. Um, <laughs> I know. I know. Just wanted we to have all of the knowledge. Oh. We <laughs> so. Um, we did schedule a code of conduct meeting yes. for the right before the next board meeting, right. which uh, is the 16th of December. 
Yes, because I think I sent it out six different ways. At 5.30. Yeah, 5.30. 30, yeah. December 16th. So do we have, I have administrators who are interested in being on the Code of Conduct Committee. I would love a couple board members, and I will bring snacks. So, I don't mind doing it again. Okay, it's fine. All right. Do we have anybody else that would like to play? Is it going to be here? Yeah, we'll do it right here. Okay. Oh, this one. Right. This is to, are you asking people to participate in that meeting or in a longer term commitment on the committee? So basically we'd like to go have an initial meeting, look at the code of conduct, see if there's anything that we need to be looking at additionally, um, just sort of do some updating from the schools as to what's going on and see if there's any area where we need to either expand it um, it, for instance, restorative justice, I think, is being used in a couple of different places and making sure that we actually have the, that information in our code of conduct. Um, things like that, Denise. I don't, I don't see this as a very, very long-term commitment because the original code of conduct committee did quite a bit of work, but we definitely need to like re-look at it and make sure that um, we're, meeting, we're meeting the needs uh, of the discipline policies in the district, that kind of thing. I could probably go to that meeting, but I'm not sure that I could commit to anything longer than that. So if there were other people that wanted to go and commit, then go for it. But um, if nobody else is, then I, I could at least go to that meeting. Okay. And I think that, well, honestly, you're well, any of you are welcome at any point for this. Um, it's nice to have a person who can consistently meet for a bit, but it's not... Um, again, I'm, I'm anticipating this to be sort of a short-term commitment. Did you say the 15th or 16th? I said, I think I've said seven different things, but <laughs> it is actually the 16th at 5.30 p.m. Okay, I can do that. Okay. All right, so what I'll do, and I'll send it out to everybody. I'll just send the code of conduct that we've utilized. I'll send it out to everybody on the board just so you have it. Um, and then if you have questions that you want to shoot at us that we can... Explore, that's fine as well. Um, okay. okay. And then I just have a, two others. We have had our initial cost center budget meeting starting this week. We haven't finished everybody, uh, but we just want you to know that they're coming in very responsible, fiscally responsible, um, but also thinking of longer term about programming, student enrollment, um, needs of new staff that are coming in those types of things. So the meetings have been going very well. Uh, so that's always a good thing to, yeah. to start that, that process that takes us so long yes. <laughs> to, to get through. And then our newsletter is set to go out either tomorrow afternoon or Monday. We sometimes hold on Friday just because we know schools send things home on Friday. So we may get that out on Monday instead. So if people who don't have children in the schools what would they do if they want to make sure they get a copy of the newsletter? Is there a list they can sign up for? That's, you know what, that is our biggest conundrum, I think, because... Yeah, because I've had some people ask me about that. They want to be more supportive of the school, okay. and so they'd like to have more information sure. about what's so going on. So I bet we can set up a, um, an email. email list. I was yep. going to say email. Yes. Yep. So we'll talk to Chris about how to put it out there to if people want to sign up for it. On the, and I'll, on the district page, and I'll send it out specifically to you two lists so you can send it out to people. That is our biggest uh, communication is our hardest piece, you mm -hmm. know. And it's not for lack of um, anybody trying, it's just a, a piece of it. We are in the process of hopefully being able to hire that piece of the PR person when, when um, Laura resigned. We haven't been able to fill that, but we're, we're getting this close. Not <laughs> this close, I think we're going to get there. So. Um, that will be helpful. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll follow up on that. Those are our others. That's it. Anybody well, else? I I oh. have another question. Um, we all got an email from um, our uh, from blah, 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 Tiffany Roberts, and I just didn't know if anyone had gotten back to her. She was asking. She's a local rep, yes. and then came in front of the board last year to talk about up the upcoming legislative session. Um, I had found it really helpful, but I didn't. I didn't know if anybody had responded to her yet. 
Do we want her to come to, do we want to invite her to a meeting? We can. I mean, if, but tonight we don't have a really heavy agenda. Right. 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 I think she was looking for it to be sometime in December before their right. session kicks off. So yeah. we, we could probably, we could set something up if she's available next meeting. Yeah. It's always nice when you, you know, to have the right. legislatures here so that we can at least express our right hopes. Yes. Folks and dreams. Right. Express them. Yeah. I mean, this is the one that ever reaches out, and yeah. um, right. I think it's nice to hear what they've got, what they're working on, and I think it's important, you know, for her to hear what some of our priorities are. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Okay. So that'll be December seventeenth, sixteenth, sixteenth. Jesus, <laughs> 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 my brain is just not on. Okay. Do we have any public input yet? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. We do have an executive session. Right. Yeah. We have to do we have to adjourn from this first though. We no. will step into executive okay. session and we'll okay. let the world know that we're not gonna do any other public input or public business after the executive session. So knowing that we will not come back. Okay. Take so if somebody want to make that motion, it's all written there. If you want to say all the numbers to go into executive session. Yeah. Do we have somebody who will make the motion? I'll make it on fancy. I make a, a motion that we move to executive session. Does that work? That does. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Second. I'll suck her. Good one. <laughs> oh, all those in favor? <laughs> That's what I was looking for. Okay. Okay. So, okay. All right. We're gonna have to kick you out, sir. <laughs> but thank you for being here. I'm gonna hit the stop recording button. Okay.